acknowledge the omnipresence of the Almighty God in our midst. His Serene Highness, Albert II, Sovereign Prince of Monaco, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, Director General of the World Health Organization, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, former UN Secretary General, Mr. Francesco Rocca, President of the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, Mr. Peter Mohe, President of the International Committee of the Red Cross. Generous partners, ladies and gentlemen. A warm Malo Lele to you all from the Kingdom of Tonga. I am privileged and honored to address all of you, humanitarians, gathered here from across the world to discuss two of the greatest threats facing humanity, the climate crisis and pandemics. I would like to concentrate on one of them, the most imminent threat to my home country, Tonga, the climate crisis. Pacific countries, and especially small island states, the Kingdom of Tonga included, are amongst the world's most vulnerable to the impacts of the climate crisis. Right now, our whole country lies isolated from the rest of the world. For once, our remoteness in the middle of the South Pacific has proved an advantage. Our borders are closed. Our small nation is, and God willing, will remain COVID-free, at least until vaccination and other measures allow us to prepare for its arrival. Men and women alike have slipped easily into new roles, adapting to these new and unusual circumstances. Daily, though, we are reminded that our immediate futures, our lives and livelihoods are closely tied to those of the wider world. No man or woman, I should say, is an island. No island lies alone on the planet. COVID has shown how the world can come together with speed and determination to fight for humanity that is good. It has shown us too that the biggest challenges in life need to be faced in the village and communities, all the while embracing what help and support comes from outside. This, I believe, points up the way forward as we in Tonga move to meet the greater global challenge of climate change. I say this for Tonga is very much on the front line of climate change. Tonga is an archipelago consisting of over 170 coral and volcanic islands, many of which are very narrow and low-lying, surrounded either by the open ocean or lagoons. Many of these atolls are threatened by sea level rising as well as changes to weather patterns and weather extremities. We count earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic activity among our challenges. We lie on the Pacific Rim of fire, but those we have always lived with. What is new is the creeping, unstoppable threats of coastal erosion ocean acidification, and the rising tides of the South Pacific. Yes, this great body of water that carried our ancestors to our islands now eats away at those same shores. Sadly, we are counted among the top five most vulnerable countries over the last decade. Our climate is tropical 
from November to April, we have a wet season, during which increasingly intense tropical cyclones and extreme rainfall and flooding occur. From May to October, during the dry season, we are exposed to heat waves and drought. Climate crisis will only worsen these impacts. Cyclones are becoming more intense with more damage from wind and sea surges. Rising sea levels will cause more flooding and coastal erosion. Extreme weather conditions such as heavy rainfall or high temperatures will become more extreme, bringing more severe floods and drought. This direct loss, damage and human suffering is devastating. But in Tonga, we have found the cost multiplied by more long-lasting effects such as disruption of our children's education, compromised infrastructure and services, and livelihoods threatened in agriculture, fishery, and tourism. In 2018, the Kingdom of Tonga suffered the highest loss from national disasters in the world as a ratio to GDP and is among the top five over the last decade. In just a couple of weeks, world leaders will gather at the 2021 Climate Change Conference, COP26, to discuss the strategy and take action to address the climate crisis. One of the goals of COP26 will also be to scale up efforts that enable and encourage countries affected by climate change to build defenses, put warning systems in place, and make infrastructure and agriculture more resilient. I believe that we can only rise to the challenges of climate change by working together. Every family has a stake in this. Every village and community, through to national government, and from there to global solidarity. Every man, every woman, and let's be clear, when we speak of this slow onset disaster, every child has a future bound up in this crisis. While we cannot prevent certain climate-related disasters from happening, we can help countries and communities to better prepare and adapt to them. Anticipatory actions and preparedness at the local level are critical, and so is the global support for them. We can and should recognize, as COVID has shown, that humanitarian consequences can so often be unequal. I am pleased to say that for decades now, our own Red Cross Society in Tonga has played its role. It has reached out and supported our vulnerable people, especially with disaster management and youth engagement activities and providing relief and assistance during emergencies and disaster recoveries. Our own experience, and I feel sure this has been seen elsewhere, is of Red Cross recognizing and embracing the important role of women in delivering on its humanitarian mission. What we need now is a blueprint for the future. We have made good progress preparing for national disasters and climate change at the national level. But we can't do this alone. Support of the international community is essential. We can only rise to the challenges of climate change by working together. We have to turn our ambitions into action and accelerate global solidarity, as well as collaboration between governments, businesses, and civil society. 
The need for action is urgent. We can't wait anymore. The Red Cross has estimated that by 2050, 200 million people every year could need international humanitarian aid as a consequence of climate-related disasters and the wider socio-economic impacts of climate change. This is nearly twice the number who need help today from the international humanitarian system. We believe this gives the Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement a unique role to play in this on both global and local levels. To the International Federation of the Red Cross, Red Crescent Societies, and the International Committee of the Red Cross, I commend you on this important event and wish you all the best in your crucial life-saving work on the international stage through the power of many. This Global Planet Red Summit showcases the power of the Red Cross and Red Crescent movement and your willingness to work together to find innovative solutions to tackle major threats facing humanity, such as climate change. Perhaps more importantly, in a world of inequality, of need amidst plenty, and of sometimes narrow national focus, let me, from one of the world's vulnerable nations, let me urge you and your 192 national societies to become ever stronger advocates for the humanitarian principles that are the lifeblood of your organization. Those principles, I believe, are one of the keys by which we can unlock our planet's future. Malo Albito, thank you.